Welcome to the monthly real estate market report. I'm Mac Rogers and I'm looking forward to spending the next few minutes with you to talk about what's happening in the U.S. residential real estate market so that you can make informed decisions on your real estate moves. We're going to hop right along. I'm going to share my screen and I will start off with a snapshot of the market year over year and some of the key changes. A lot of noise, if you will, about a lot of different things in real estate right now. But if we look at the snapshot year over year metrics, we can see showings are up 49.5% year over year. A lot of people getting out and wanting to look at homes across the country. Purchase applications up 39%. So we're in an interesting period right now where we're going to start to see a lot of these metrics shoot up year over year because this is measuring the weeks when we first started the lockdown last year. If we look at the pending deals, this is actually measuring February. It's down just slightly, but existing home sales and new home sales both up almost 10%. Now, where's the issue here, right? Well, the issue is in inventory. We know that across the country, it's something that continues to plague the market. But overall, if we look at some of the other metrics year over year, a very strong market as we head into spring. The other big thing that's been going on in real estate is we're seeing a rise in interest rates. Average 30-year fix, as recorded by Freddie Mac, is at 3.18% right now. To put that into perspective, we saw towards the end of the year dipping down into the middle twos. This is this puts us back somewhere in June as of last year, and we saw the rates, like I mentioned, down in the twos. Historically low interest rates. 16 times last year, a new low in av the average 30-year fix, and it's starting to come back up and really seeing the return of those rates creeping a little bit higher as the economy improves across the country. The reality is, and I think George Ratui sums it up very well here. He says, home sellers and home buyers have gotten really used to extreme low rates. Rates even in the threes to 3.4 range will remain extremely affordable by historic standards. We've been talking about rates uh, are going up and continue to rise as the economy improves. I do expect in the coming months that we will get estimates and forecasts for what experts are saying the remainder of this year will be for the rate environment. And I think some of those are going to be uptick. We've seen Goldman Sachs saying as high as 3.75 by the end of the year. Some are saying more on the lower end of that, 3.25. Now, is it gonna be going to 3.75? What I do know is it's probably not going to be where we're at today, and we'll continue to see interest rates increase throughout the year as the economy improves. All this low interest rates, people running out to buy homes has caused the inventory challenge across the country. This is the snapshot of new listings coming into the market as compared to total listings in the country. Right now, everywhere on average, we're down 52% year over year in the number of homes that are available on the market for those that wanna buy. We wanna see that continue to grow as we move into a strong spring market and need more people to put their homes on the market. But right Right now, definitely a deficit across the country. If we look at this map right here, we can see the majority of the country in this red region. In some states in this dark red, 60% plus down year over year. Reasons are low interest rates, the pandemic, and other pressures around housing have caused this issue of low inventory. Experts are forecasting inventory to come back in the market the second half of the year as more and more people get comfortable with what's going on in the environment. Dr. Lynn Fresher from FHFA said this, House prices nationwide recorded the largest annual and quarterly increase in the history of the FHFA home price index. This low inventory is causing prices to spike up. She accounts it to what we just said, low mortgage rates. We've seen that. Pent up demand from home buyers and a limited housing supply propelled every region of the country to experience faster growth in 2020 compared to a year ago despite the pandemic. Back a year ago, John Burns Consulting predicted that the great American move, that people would move from their homes for financial reasons, health or security reasons, just a need for something else in their home. And that certainly happened as we went through 2020 and now into 2021, and it's caused price to increase. One very interesting thing here that I wanna share with you is new construction of single family home units. 
for the last 13 years, they've been below the 50 year average. Now, if we go back in time, you see the red bars in the middle of the screen here. That's around 04, 05, 06. Some of the record setting times in real estate. Four consecutive years of record setting number of units being built. There were three years in this country when more than a million and a half homes were built in 04, 05, and 06. Never happened before and hasn't happened again. Since that time, builders have not been bringing to market the number of units to keep up with population growth. If you look back in the 70s and 80s, more homes were built in this country back then than there are today. We're in a deficit here because literally the number of new units coming into the market has not been there. Now, builders are building. Permits are up right now. They're concerned, obviously, about rising costs in new home market. But what we need is more builders to build more homes to get people that want to own a home a chance to do so. One of the questions that comes up, comes up over and over, and I want to address this here because I think it's coming up in a lot of different places. Are we seeing a lot of cash out refinancing issues? I clipped a couple of uh, titles here. Cash out refis surged to their highest level since the financial crisis. House or ATM cash out refinances spike in 2020. It's all leading to this question, are we seeing a cash out refinance crisis in this country? Is this something that we want to take a look at and say, okay, what's true about that? What's not true about it? Like I always do, give you the facts to be able to go out and make educated decisions on your purchase or sale. First, let's look at this. Home equity cashed out by refinances in billions. We've isolated this past year in 2020 to the highest year in 2006. 153 billion last year cashed out as cash out refinances in this country. Back then at the height of the market, 321 billion cashed out. Nowhere near what it was back then. But in context, we have to understand how it compares relative to the amount of cash out refinances being transacted across the country. Homeowners in the last 10 years have not accessed this equity. Also back then, equity was around 5 trillion compared to today at over 7 trillion. Equity is surging in this country. As we look at this cash out refinances in 2020, we're nothing like 2006. And that's where these questions come in. Okay, is it like back then? Back then in 2006, 89% of the transaction were cash out refinances. We were in an upward trending interest rate environment back in 2006 in the first half of the year. So nobody's going to be refinancing there to get a better deal for the most part. And where do we see it today? We've been in a downward trending interest rate environment for, for the last year. And 33% of the refinances were cash out refinances. The total cash out is 325 billion back then. This represents 7% of total equity back then. Today, 153 billion in 2020, representing only 2% of total equity. So a very different market today versus back then. I'll continue to bring you these comparisons so you can judge for yourself and compare it. You can make informed decisions. The Wall Street Journal came out with this and said this, the residential real estate market is on its biggest tear since 2006, just before the housing bubble burst and set off a global recession. Yet in nearly every meaningful way, today's market is the inverse of the previous boom. In the mid 2000s, loose mortgage lending hit standards enabled borrowers with poor credit histories to purchase homes beyond their means, sometimes with mortgages that require low down payment or no down payment at all. We know that today's lending standards have changed. We know that in order to go and obtain financing for a home loan, you've got to qualify and demonstrate the ability to repay. It's very different. No doubt the market that we're in is showing tremendous demand for homes across the country. NAR or the National Association of Realtors came out and said this speaking of demand. With demand for homes outpacing new listings, buyer competition continues to intensify. On average, there were four offers per home sold, according to NAR's latest February Realtor Confidence Index report. Now, a year ago, there were two to three buyers for every home sold. 
The intense competition has led to double digit price growth and property selling in record time. To get back to a healthy supply, we need an equivalent of six months of monthly inventory. That's an additional 2.7 million homes that should be on the market for sale right now. I think this starts to come down to the question that many are asking right now. Is this like the last time? So let's break down the comparison of the two markets. The time leading up to 2006 compared to today and give you a look at that so that you can tell the difference between the two markets. First, if we look at annual home price appreciation, it's significant. In the last year, 2020, according to CoreLogic, 9.2 appreciation. But if we start to compare the years surrounding the lead up to uh, 2006 compared to the lead up to today, Back then, the annual average appreciation was just over 10%. Just the average from 2002 to 2005. And today, 2017 to 2019, the average is 6.3% in annual appreciation. Big difference there. Certainly, we're seeing appreciation based on lack of supply, and I'm going to talk about supply in a moment. So people are out there and demand is strong. Let's go back to lending standards and compare back then to and today. This graphic here shows you default risk in mortgage markets. A very good visual about where are lending standards today as compared to back then. This yellow line represents the reasonable lending standard, a little bit of product risk, a lot of borrower risk back then, then if you look at the graphic here around 2005 and six, where today product risk has been eliminated from our business. The loan products that were in the market back then aren't around today. Borrower risk has also been severely cut. It's harder to qualify for a home loan. Combine this with the demand, we can say back then demand was inflated, whereas today demand is real as measured by those with their ability to qualify for a home loan. Back then, another interesting comparison, single family inventory was rising in 04, 05, 06, and 07. And prices were going up, whereas today, inventory has been going down and prices are going up. So when we look at economics, it's supposed to be high demand equals uh, and low supply equals higher prices, which is what is happening today. So we're dealing with the dynamics in the market back then that is different from today. Fundamentally, two very different markets. One was based out of speculation and this one on true demand. I like this quote from Odetta Koshi. She says, it's not just a seller's market, it's a super seller's market. This is an increasingly competitive home buying environment and that's true across the country. Homes are selling at a much faster rate, again, because of high demand and lack of inventory. On average, days on the market are 21 days. As soon as a house hits the market, it gets sold. With everything that's going on right now, now, I think it's safe to say that when we look back at 2021, we are going to see a continuation of what happened in 2020. Prices are still rapidly escalating, supply still not keeping up with demand, and the increasing interest rates not having a major impact on home buyers' affordability. So that's our April real estate market report. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back on the next month. Check out the rest of our videos.